Yes, Adriel. <laughs> oh, um, okay. Before I ask the question, are you okay? You don't. That doesn't sound good. It's just part of the, <laughs> this respiratory thing. Okay. Also, yeah. I don't really dip chips. I I just eat chips plain. Okay, well maybe okay, well maybe if you're eating Dorito chips, I'll probably like I'll probably squeeze some lime in it. So Oh, okay. If that counts as a combo, that okay. That'll that you know what that can work. Um Ryan, it's a weird thing, like my throat feels better in the morning, but then I have to teach all day. So by the end of the day it feels worse. And then today for some reason the coughing started. So who knows? <laughs> um, yeah, so it just depends on what mood I'm in. I I like French onion dip. I'm weird, I guess. I don't know. It's just a normal, I guess, a regular thing. Nachos are, oh, I like nachos. Definitely nachos. I Now, I am not a red sauce person. I mean, don't get me wrong. I do like salsa and pico. I'm more of a green sauce person. Um, and I think that comes from living 20 years in Texas, I guess. Um, yeah, here's the problem with that, Gabriel. Having a sub means I have to create videos ahead of time for you guys and lesson plans. And I just trying to do videos for all of this <laughs> just sounds so much worse. <laughs> so I'm, I apologize guys for the coughing. I'm doing the best that I can. Okay. Um, all right. Yes, Adriel? I'm pretty sure being sick is out of your control. I don't think you could just control your sickness. No, I, I can't, but I do apologize for coughing away during our thing. I'm, you know, I got my cough drops and I'll grab those too. You just eat plain potato chips, Taj? Okay. Thank you, Demi. So we are just going to do the best that we can to get through all of this. Our module eight lesson for the course arc in the journal that was due yesterday. So it closes on the 29th. So now you are in your one week grace period. So for those of you who turned them in, like I asked you to yesterday and you gave me your final concluding sentence on your writing activity. Good job. If you did not um, Monday and yesterday's video, we went over the module eight lesson for journal and course arc. So um, you need to go back, watch those videos in our agenda, get that done and get it turned in. Remember your journals are a summative grade. And there are a lot of you that if you don't pass this quarter, you're repeating this class. And that would just plain suck, right? So let's take care of business. Let's, let's take care of it and let's get this done, all right? Um, today, we're going to start the Great Wall of China DBQ. I'm doing it slightly different than we did last time. So I need you guys to get into your um, module eight, if you would, in your um, class. I'm going to go to the, the tab. And it's the Great Wall of China DBQ. And then I need you to click on the link to make your own copy. Now, this is the one that we are going through. And as you can see, it's slightly different. I decided to break it up a little bit further than the way we had done it last time. And this time, we're not doing an actual essay. You are answering all of the questions, so there's a lot more questions involved, okay? And then at the very end of this, kind of what we did last time, we are going to categorize which documents talked about the benefits of the Great Wall and which documents talked about the costs. So which documents laid on which side of the argument, okay? So what I need you guys to do is to make your copy of this document so that we can get started on that, please. If you would, I would appreciate it. You already made your copy, great. Gabriel made his, Anaya made hers. Okay, give me the thumbs up, guys, when you've got your copies open and ready to go. 
Angeline, did you have a question or you just hit the wrong key? Yeah, I hit the wrong key. Sorry. That's okay. I'm completely okay with that. I get it. Okay, so let me open this up. All right, so I have the document that I made as a key. Okay, yes, guys, I go through these, I read these, I make a key to help out with these. Okay. So looking at this, the question that we're answering is the Great Wall of Ancient China. Did the benefits outweigh the costs? That's what we're looking at, right? And so the first thing just tells you these are the documents we're looking at, right? A through F. And then here's our overview. The Great Wall of China is often regarded as one of the man-made wonders of the world. It was built over 2,000 year period, actually closer to 2,500 year period. And GPS satellites have measured its various sections to be 5,488 miles long. Such a wall did not come cheap in terms of lives lost, time, and money spent. So this mini queue focuses on two of the early Chinese wall building dynasty, the Qin from 226 to 206 BCE. Remember during BCE, we count backwards, right? So as we get closer to the zero mark, we go like, so it's 221 to 206. And then the Han dynasty, which was 206 BCE to 220 CE. So it crossed over, right? And basically, it asks if all the effort was worth it. So the first question that we have in our thing was, was the, what is the analytical question being asked by this DBQ? Did the benefits of the Great Wall outweigh the costs of the wall? That's what they're asking. Were the benefits more than the costs? So then what terms? in the question need to be defined. Well, what exactly is a benefit and what exactly is a cost? So what would you guys think would be a benefit before we've even gotten into this? <laughs> what would you consider? Defense, a good thing, Taj, yes. And a good thing, Sammy, you said defense, okay. Um, anything else? That seems to be pretty much the big thing, right? Defending the people of your country, the positive effects of it. Yeah. Okay. What about the costs? What would the cost be of this? Yeah, so what would the negative things be for this? Time, definitely, right? Going to take a lot of time. The supplies needed, yeah. No, Ryan, I said we were not doing an essay. Okay, so rewrite the question in your own words. So how would you rewrite the question, guys? And give me just a minute. I will be, like, you guys figure that out. Put it in the chat. I will be right back. Um, I would say, what are the positive and negative effects of building the Great Wall? 
because that's a little bit awkward. I think what you're trying to say is you're you're trying yeah building. I wouldn't say outweighing, but that's a good thought. Anybody else? <laughs> Sorry about that. I was trying not to cough horrifically in this. Did the benefits exceed the cost? There you go. That's another good one. Was a Great Wall a good thing or a bad thing for China? If you want to go really simple. Miss, I can't think of any good, good. Okay, well, Taj has given us one. Ryan has given us one. I have one up on the screen. Any one of those can work. Yes, Adriel? Actually, how about this? How about this? What does the does the positive effects of the Great Wall benefit benefits outweigh the negative effects of the wall? Yeah, that's fine. That works. Okay. Um, Ryan has um, graciously is, said he would let you copy and paste his. Yes, Annalisa. Um, is this one like? Because I don't know if it would necessarily be um a good way of rewriting the question. But mine was mine was was it a good build decision for China? was what can you say that again um my i re rewrote the question by saying was was it a good build decision for china oh i like that that can work too i didn't even think to go there i just immediately was like well you should put the great wall in but i like that that can work as well annalisa that is a that that's a good one yeah okay thank you you're welcome. All right. So are we good with the first three questions, guys? I am, Kenneth. I am. I have a respiratory infection. So I think you might have come in a little late. So I'm apologizing for those of you who came in late. If I have a coughing fit, I will try and mute myself and everything else if it gets nah. bad. I'm sorry because I was late because my internet wouldn't connect. I had to switch to my hotspot on my phone. Oh, again. Oh no. Oh, no. It, it had went out as soon as when I got out of uh, first period. Of course. Of course. That's how it works, right? <laughs> All right, guys. Are we good with the first three questions, everybody? Yes. All right, I'm seeing a whole lot of yeses. Okay, so let's move on to the background essay questions. And you know, I am, it says background essay questions and yet for some reason, the background essay did not pop in here. So we're gonna do the background essay together because I actually have a, um, a copy of the background essay so just give me a moment here and i'm going to actually open that up for everybody and project it for everybody okay if i can let me see maybe why is oh i don't know if it's going to let me project this or not let me see Give me a moment, okay? I may have to project an entire screen. All right, so I'm going to project an entire screen just because I want to make this large enough for you guys to be able to see the whole thing. Okay. All right, can you guys see this? I hope. All right, so we kind of already answered the first question in the background essay questions, and it says, what were the first two important wall building dynasties? And back when we did like just the overview, it tells you immediately that the Qin, which is spelled Q-I-N, and the Han, H-A-N, dynasties were the first two important wall building dynasties. And we can see that when it talks about um, 
the Qin Dynasty right up here. And then it talks about the Han Dynasty right here. Oops, go down. Right here. So question number four is the Qin and the Han Dynasties. The Chen. Do so you guys have that? Okay, there you go. It's in the chat. The second question, number five, it says, how many years did each of these dynasties last? So when we're up here, looking at this one, it says on 221 BCE, the local ruler from the Chinese state of Qin violently conquered many towns and states and merged them into a large new kingdom. That kingdom uh, was the beginning of what we call China today. This ruler who came to me known as Emperor Chen died 11 years later, but in that short, brutal time, he directed a number of grand projects. So when we're looking at um, how many years did each of these dynasties um, <clears throat> last, we know from um, 221 to 206 BCE, that's 15 years for the Qin dynasty, okay? And then if we come down and it talks about cruel rulers invite rebellion, the Qin was cruel. Um, in 206 BCE, his successors were overthrown by the Han dynasty, which ruled for the next 400 years. So then we have the Han for 400 years. So that would be our answer for question number five, right? And both of these are in the chat, okay? All right. Um, question number six says, was there one great wall of China? Explain. All right. At this point, two things need to make, be made clear. The Great Wall was never one continuous in structure. What we call the Great Wall is really a series of walls constructed over a period of 2,500 years. When each dynasty came into power, workers connected previously built walls, repaired and extended them, or tore them down and built anew. This was also important to note that the beautiful, winding Great Wall that many of us have in our minds was built not by the Qin or the Han, but by the Ming dynasty, which ruled 1,500 years after the Han. Our focus in this DBQ is on the earlier walls, those the ones that were constructed by the Qin and the Han, okay? So who, um, what would we write for question number six? Can someone give us an answer for that one? Anybody, anybody? I need answers from you guys. <laughs> You can either unmute or you can type it in the chat. Come on, guys. Yes, Ryan? You can go ahead, Ryan. There, uh, there was only one great wall of China because they didn't have that much resources, but now they have five. For numbers, for question number six, oh, was there one continuous structure? Was there one great wall? Oh, wait. 
Oh wait, um, it wasn't a wall. It was a thing of of fortifications. Yes. So, um, what we say is no. There was not one great wall. It was a series of walls constructed over a period of twenty five hundred years. Miss. Yes, Adriel. Actually, wait. I was gonna like say that. I just I noticed the plural in walls, and I was like, wait. Yeah. Like, Taj just put an yeah. Taj just put an answer in the chat for everybody. Yeah, yeah I was talking like the plural. Yep. Yeah. There you go. That, that gave me the clue that there's more than one great walls. Yep. There you go. Yep. There you go. Taj and Ryan both have their, their answers in the chat. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. The next question. Uh, what is the connection between the walls and the, and this is really kind of the way it's pronounced is Shung Nyu. Shung Nyu. Yes, Angeline? Um, I'm so sorry, Ms. Razor. My parents just got back in town and I have to go home. So I have to leave class for you. Okay. I mean, if you're not in here for the 30 minutes, I can't mark you as present, but you can try and have your parents submit an, an absence note and see if they'll take it. Um, okay. Thank you so much. Bye. Have a nice day. Okay. Just watch the video later. Okay. Okay. I will. Thank you. Uh huh. So guys, if you look at the Shang Yu, right down here, do you see where my little hand is on here? It asks, what is the connection between the walls and the Shang Yu? Remember, they, the Shang Yu, they called them bothersome, and they lived beyond China's northern border, which is where they started building those walls. So the connection between the walls and the Shang Yu was what? How would we answer that? Anybody have an answer? How, you know, how can we make that work? There you go. Perfect. Yeah. They're constantly, their incursions down into the different kingdoms in Northern China led them to start like literally building like the, what would become known as the great wall. Good. Good. All right. The next question, what was the primary building ingredient of a hang to wall section? Which was right there, pounded earth. They would build these like, you know, frames and they would dump earth in there and they would pound it down like, like pack it. Right. And then just keep adding it and making layers until they filled the frame and then they would remove the frame and build the next section and section and section so our answer would be pounded earth right all right and then we have it's some definitions oops Emperor Chen is, there you go. Thank you, Ryan. So for Emperor Chen, you would put a local ruler from the Chinese state of Chen who violently conquered many towns and states and merged them into a large new kingdom that would become known as China, right? That's who Emperor Chen is. The Terracotta Army, this is 8,000 larger than life soldiers that were sculpted out of um, like mud, terracotta mud, 
um, that are modeled after <laughs> actual soldiers. So when you actually go down in there, well, you can't actually go down in there, but you can see pictures of them. Um, every soldier has its own unique face. But these 8,000 larger than life soldiers were meant to accompany Emperor Chen into the next world. And I'll give you some more of these in just a minute. I'll put them into here after we get through with this because I, I had to just show you my screen. The Han Dynasty, right? The, um, let's see, they over, <coughs> they came to power in 206 BCE by overthrowing the Chen Dynasty and ruled for 400 years. The Shang Yu were people who lived beyond China's northern borders. And then the Hang Tu, which is almost exactly like what um, Ryan put. It is a pounded earth wall used to build the beginnings of the Great Wall. And then let me pull up. I've got to pull out of this one and go back to just presenting a tab. Give me a moment. All right. So Emperor Chen, I'll put these in the chat. Here's your first definition. The Terracotta Army, like I said, they're absolutely amazing. But they literally sculpted 8,000 Terracotta soldiers with all of their own individual faces. The Han Dynasty is the ones who overthrew the Chen Dynasty and ruled for the next 400 years. The Sheng Yu are the group of people that live beyond China's northern borders. And then the Hang Tu is a pounded earth wall construction. All right, everything is now in the chat. everybody have that how about give me a thumbs up when you have all of the definitions completed please see a couple All right. Okay. So the next um, questions that we have deal with a map that we're looking at for document A. It's the Great Wall of Chen and Han, China. And we have um, some questions. Okay. So the first question number 10 examine the map and list two rivers two deserts and three major trading centers. So can you guys give me 
two rivers, two deserts, and three trading centers? Anybody? I mean, if you look at this, you can see one right here. This is one of the major ones. Here's the second major one. Okay, so Dunhong is what? Okay, so deserts. Gobi Desert, Tak, ta I always have a hard time. Tak Limkan Desert. So put Gobi Desert and Tak Limkan Desert. <clears throat> okay, Samuel gave us one of the three trading centers, right? Which is the Dong Huang. Okay. What other trading centers do we see? The Silk Road is not a trading center. Yeah, you need an actual center. So if you look, um, okay, so you have like, you see the little, like the, let's see if I can, I can't really, I can make it bigger, but then we can't see the whole map. But let me, let me make it a little bit bigger. Okay. See how, see the little spot right there? We have the same thing right here. So Turpan would be a trading center. And Cheng Yin, which was the capital, is also a trading center, which makes sense, right? So Turpan, Dunhuang, and the Cheng Yin. So we would add Turpan and um, Chang'an uh, as for trading centers. And then if you look at this map, you can see, so this one right here, let me go over here. It's called the Yellow River. It's also called the Huanghe River, but we call it the Yellow River. And then the Yangtze River, those would be the two major rivers that we would see. So Yellow and Yangtze. And there we have all of the parts of number 10 answered, right? Well, yeah, Dong Huang, um, Samuel had already given us that one, but thank you, McKing. Okay. All right. The next question has two parts. It says, many Chinese merchants traveled only as far as Dunhuang on the Silk Road. Can you give two reasons why? Well, if we look at this picture, we see the wall, right? Where you notice what happens to the wall after Dong Huang? What do we notice past here? Can anybody give me an answer? Anybody, anybody? I'm asking you question number 11 in your, in your 
DBQ. What does question number 11 say? As I told you, I cannot be constantly repeating myself today. No, that's not the reason why they didn't go past this spot, Ryan. Not according to the map. You have to use the map. What does the map show you? Talking about the Great Wall of the Chin and Han China, that's okay. Okay, what else? You've got to, you cannot just, you've got to interpret, guys. Why would Chinese merchants not go past this point? There's two reasons why. What are two reasons why Chinese merchants would get to Dan Huang and go, yep, we're done, we're stopping here. Okay, what would be the dangers? Okay, why would they be worried about the invaders? Keep going. But why? Why would they why wouldn't they be worried about invaders over here? Like why would this not worry them over here but it would worry them past here? There you go. That's the first part. The wall and its protection stopped. That's number 1. The wall and its protection stopped. Okay, what else? What else would they be actually moving into? What's right here, guys? The desert. That's where the Tamlican Desert starts. Right? Are you, a, if you're a merchant, are you going to want to travel through a desert? No, right? So there's our two answers. Worse than Nevada, Samuel. Their desert is actually a little bit worse. <laughs> All right. Um, question number 12. So it says the information box says that the Han added 4,000 miles of wall. Okay. Refer to the mileage scale. How can this be true? So we look at, this is what the Great Wall is, right? We look at the scale. That's 400 miles. How can four, that doesn't look like 4,000 miles, right? So how can it be true that the Han added 4,000 miles? What aren't we going to see? What do you notice about this wall, guys? It doesn't show a lot of detail, does it? Because this map can't, right? 
We can only see what we can see. And it looks like it's this straightforward thing, right? And we know it wasn't. So the, the problem with part of this is a map of this scale does not show all the twists and turns made by the wall. So it looks straightforward, but like say this, I don't know, I'll pick a section. This looks straight, right? This looks like it's just straight. It was probably all over the place, right? All right, let's finish this up. Question number 13. Judging from the map, how might China have benefited from building the Great Wall? So if you look at the map, it points to the original need for the wall, which is defense along the northern border where the Xinyu are, the Mongols, right? It also shows how it protected the development of trade along the western edge with the Silk Road. Yeah, so there you go. Good. So I would say I would add a little bit more to that, McKean, and say it offered protection in the north from invaders and along the Silk Road. And then question number 14, is there anything on the map that indicates there may have been some costs involved in building the wall? Okay, but we're answering the question based on the map, Ryan. You've got to stick with what the document we're using is the map. So we have to stick with what we see and what we can infer from the map. Okay? That's the thing with document-based questions. DBQs are all about the documents. Now, we can make that logical assumption at the end in an essay based on the documents but when we're answering questions on the documents themselves we've got to stick pretty narrowly to the document i mean you're you're on the right track just you're further along that would be something we would add in the essay part okay so looking at this wall that we see here it's huge right <clears throat> massive projects like this usually result in worker deaths right and then remember look at all these it says watchtowers well watchtowers would mean that they're on the lookout for invaders so there's danger involved in that as well so that could be you know war loss of soldiers yeah All right, so we are going to finish up going through this on Monday. I do want you guys, though, to finish going through the documents and answering as many questions as you can so that you come prepared on Monday to go through these with me and be able to give me answers, okay? Do not forget that um <clears throat> tomorrow is attendance assignments and small group meets okay and then um yeah small group meet tomorrow morning 10 to 11 45 and your attendance and that's it i just i can't keep talking guys my throat is killing me i'm sorry we're going to stop here. No, today's Thursday.
Thursday. It is, I know, right? It's been a strange week coming back from spring break. 